A balance sheet usually appears as a confusing document. It has a lot of headers in it. On the asset side and liability side, there are line items that tend to be confusing. And it's a statement that tends to kind of appear very complicated to new investors or new analysts. In this video, we'll try and decode all those line items. What do they mean with the live example of a particular company that we will use in our discussion? Balance sheet ke sare line items ko one by one discuss karenge by the end of this particular video. My name is Piyush and welcome to another video on our channel. Stay till the end and you will have a good understanding of what those line items on a balance sheet mean. Right. But first up, what do we mean by a balance sheet? Balance sheet hota kya hai? Right. So it's a financial statement that is telling us about the financial position of a company, the current financial position of a company. It's a statement that is at a point of time. Exactly is some company ke paas kya assets and kya liabilities hai wo balance sheet dikha hai. If you think about it, when the company starts, it has taken money from some of its stakeholders, equity holders or lenders would have given it the money. This is the money that the company owes to its stakeholders. Using this money, the company will go and buy business generating assets, right? So that's what the company owns. So what you owe versus what you own is what is coming on the balance sheet. It's an equality. It's called a balance sheet because it's an equality that sources of funds that you have collected will either equal the usage of those funds or this would be available in the form of cash, unutilized funds, right? So that's why we call it the balance sheet. The two sides of the balance sheet are typically liabilities and assets. What are liabilities? People have given us money. Equity holders and debt holders have given us the money. This is what we owe to them. We are supposed to return it to them at some point of time in some form or fashion. That's what we call as sources of funds. Now, these sources of funds are going to be used in business generating assets. That's what will be assets. And that is what is called as application of the funds. This is what we own. So liabilities, sources of funds or what we owe will equal assets, application of funds or what we own. And that's why this is a balance sheet. Now, within these sites and within these headers of assets and liabilities, there are more classifications that come up, right? So assets could be long term assets or short term assets. Long term assets are assets that, you know, would kind of span over multiple years of their useful life property, plant, equipment, machinery, all of this is a long-term asset. These are called tangible long-term assets, right? Then there could be long-term assets that are intangible in nature. So software, for example, could be a long-term asset that is intangible. You can't sort of touch and feel it, but it's an asset nevertheless, right? So there are long-term assets that could be tangible and intangible, right? Then there are short-term assets that could come up into picture. These are typically called current assets. Current assets are assets that usually are generating cash for the business within one business cycle or a year. Usually you use the definition of a year. Now, this could include things like raw material or inventory for the company. This could include cash balances. This could include, uh, you know, I've sold something to somebody, but I have not received the money as yet. Something called as accounts receivable. All of those would be termed under the current assets of the company. On the liability side, you have first the equity which is the shareholders money that has been put in. Equity itself is kind of broken into two components. There is share capital that comes up, right? And there is reserves that comes up. Share capital is the initial amount of money that was pumped into the company at face value. So number of shares into the face value of the company is what share capital is. Then as the company proceeds and as it makes more and more profit, which it doesn't distribute to shareholders as dividends, this money keeps getting reinvested. We've actually discussed this in another video in our channel. So you can also take a look at that. We'll put the link of that in the description. So reserves will keep kind of building up. This is the reinvestment in the company that has happened over multiple years. And that kind of becomes a very large component. Remember, this is shareholder money. This is supposed to be returned to the shareholders at some point of time. Hence comes under the equity of the company. Long-term liabilities are typically, you know, examples would be, let's say, borrowings or debt. Long-term debt, let's say a company takes a five-year borrowing. There could be other headers in this as well, and we'll talk about that. But typically, if you have taken a five-year loan, that will come up and appear as a long-term liability. Current liabilities would be short-term liabilities. Once again, liabilities that typically have to be settled within a year or one business cycle. And examples could be short-term borrowings, right? Short-term debt that you would have 
or let's say a customer has given you an advance or maybe you have to pay a supplier. You bought some supplies, but you haven't paid the supplier. So you have to pay the supplier. That would be a current liability, right? Now, without much ado, what we'll do is we'll dive right into the financial statements of a particular company. We'll pick up DMART, right? And DMART ke financial statement ko dekhte hain, uske balance sheet ko dekhte hain, aur balance sheet ke andar jo line items hain, unko decode karne ki koshish karte hain, right? So, first element that comes up on the balance sheet on the side of the assets is the long-term assets, also called as the non-current assets. So, non-current assets are basically long-term assets that you see. And you start with the first line item, which is property, plant and equipment. As the name suggests, this is basically whatever uh, factory or stores that the company owns. DMART is a retail store. So whatever stores they own, that would come under this furniture, any kind of sort of machinery that they're using. All of it would come under property, plant and equipment. You will note this is the largest line item in terms of all their assets because that's what they own. Right. Then you see a line item called capital work in progress. Now, what does capital work in progress mean is that let's say you are adding a bunch of stores or you are adding or building a building at the end of the year. And then on 31st of March 2025, you were not able to complete it. Right. It didn't get completed at that point. So this is still under construction. So this is work in progress, but this is capital work in progress, which means it is an asset of long term asset that is being constructed at this point of time. Once this gets completed, it will go and get settled in plant, property and equipment. So it will become a fixed asset after that. Currently, it's capital work in progress. Any under construction capital expenditure that you're doing will come here. Right. Then you see a line item called right of use assets. Now, right of use assets is a slightly you know, tricky component that has come up in the last few years post 2020. I will try and explain this with a very simple understanding. Let's assume I have a rented uh, place or a store. Right. In this case, because DMART has stores, let's say they have a rented store. Now, as per accounting principles, if this is a long term lease or a long term rent or operating lease that is there, they are supposed to report it in a fashion, assuming they borrowed money and bought it. So rather than showing it as a rental, they have to show that they borrowed money and bought this asset. Right. Now, obviously, this is notional because you're not really borrowing money or buying the asset. You've actually rented the asset, but you have to denote it in accounting statements as if you are borrowing money and buying this asset. Because this is a notional asset, it is classified separately as a right of use asset. This is actually the operating lease converted into the financial lease for the company, right? Then you have investment properties. So maybe the company has invested some money in some kind of investment, some properties, which is more from an investing perspective, but not for a business use perspective. Maybe they bought a land somewhere that's here. You see intangible assets here, right? This is what will include software for somebody like a DMART or trademarks or, you know, some of those uh, intangible assets that could come into picture. License fee, for example, that is paid for, let's say, if there was a telecom company that was paying a license fee that would come under intangible assets, essentially, right? Then you have financial assets, you have investments within that, which could be long term investments. You've put money in, let's say, mutual funds over a longer period of time, for example, may not necessarily be mutual funds here, but anything that is an investment financial asset, financial investment for a longer period than one year will come here. Then there are some other financial assets. For example, let's say the company has given some kind of a rental deposit or something somewhere, right? They have a store that they've rented. They may have given a deposit. That will come under other financial assets that you see. Income tax assets are basically, you know, you've maybe paid some extra income tax initially, and that's going to kind of carry as asset. Uh, other non-current assets could be, for example, you are doing some kind of a capital advance that you've given. What do you mean by capital advance? I'm constructing a factory or a building or a store, and I have given advance to the person who's constructing it for me, right? So that's a capital advance that you've given. Anything that you have given as a kind of a loan or anything that you have given in an advance is basically an asset for you because it's going to generate something for you in the future. And that is what is going to get classified here in other non-current assets. So that's the set of examples that you will see with respect to all the non-current assets that we see on DMART's balance sheet, right? Let's look at current assets now. So as you would imagine, it's a retail business. So inventories would be the largest current asset for them. And then there are a bunch of financial assets that come up, investments, short-term investments. They don't have actually any short-term investments. 
most of it is long term investment for them now right so that number appears to be zero trade receivables if i sold something but the customer is yet to pay me right that's what will come up as trade receivables remember dmart has sales north of 50000 crore so this is a very small number for them logical because it's a retail business to retail business mein hum paisa deke hi saman kharidte hain aisa nahi hai ki saman kharidne ke bahut baad mein hum paisa de rahe hain so essentially receivables ka number chota hoga when you compare it to their overall sales number 50000 crore ke sales pe lagbhag 300 crore ke aas pass ka receivable hai right cash and cash equivalents is basically the money available directly for use as cash and bank balances other than this is denoted as bank balances other financial assets for example could be you know just for example the rental deposit that uh, you know other uh, that that you have given to somebody uh, again uh, for a short period of time so longer term rental deposit would come under other financial assets in the non current assets but shorter term deposits or a loan that you have given to an employee for example will come under other financial assets and once again other current assets are any kind of advances given to let's say a supplier or somebody that would be other current assets that would get classified here so those are all your major headers on the current asset side that basically covers your non current and current assets which brings us to the liability side of things and there are two segments here first up is equity which is there and we said equity share capital is basically number of shares multiplied by the face value of the share so if the face value is 10 rupees and the company has let's say 100 crore shares then 100 into 10 is what will appear as share capital everything else which is let's say you made a lot of money in terms of making profits and so on and so forth or if the share was issued at a premium then there's a share premium account all of that is going to come in the other equity component so other equity could include uh, general reserves it could include share premium reserve and so on and so forth but generally for a simple understanding if a company makes a profit it has not distributed that profit as dividends that will go and sit in other equity it keeps getting added each year it's a cumulative number right that is what you would mean by other equity in this context then you have liabilities uh, financial liabilities now remember this company actually doesn't have too much debt it doesn't have actual any debt for that matter right uh, it has some lease liabilities remember that discussion we had with uh, you know you have a store on rent you have to classify it as if you borrowed money and then bought it on the other side we put assets called right of use assets on the liability side we will have lease liabilities these are notional liabilities that are coming up and you'll have lease liabilities both in the long term and short term liabilities that will come up so this is the long term or non current liabilities this is the lease liability which is a notional lease liability denoting the notional debt you have borrowed in order to uh, put that rental asset as as if you had bought that asset right then you have a term called deferred tax liabilities in some balance sheets you will also see deferred tax assets coming now why does deferred tax come just think about it in a very simple manner there are two ways to sort of report your financial statements one is basically what your uh, accounting statements tell you so let's say i bought a, a machine where i said the useful life of the machine is 2 years right so i'm going to depreciate it 50% in both the years so let's say i had 100 rupees spent on the machine my depreciation will come as 50 and 50 in the first two years now income tax department however has their own numbers or useful life calculations that come up income tax department might actually come and say that look we don't agree to this we think the useful life will be 4 years so you have to actually depreciate 25 25 25 and 25 across 4 years right so you have to do this now we know that depreciation reduces your profit before tax and so your tax component can change based on whether you choose 50 here or whether you choose 25 here correct in accounting statements if i have chosen 50 my pbt will be lower and consequently my reported tax will be lower but income tax department goes by their calculations and there you would have paid a higher tax so you've actually paid a higher tax but you're accounting for a lower tax so in this kind of a scenario if you've paid more before uh, you're accounting for it uh, you know then you are creating an asset otherwise you'll create a liability this could be exactly the opposite way around as well and so whether you are creating an asset or this is a timing mismatch issue remember right because at the end of the 4 years you would eventually have even this out if the useful life was actually 4 years at the end of 4 years you would even even this out right so this is just a timing mismatch that is happening 
if a deferred tax liability is getting created, it will get consumed over the next few years. If a deferred tax asset is being created, that will also get consumed over a few years. So you'll basically remove it over the actual useful life of that asset. This is just a concept that comes up here. You'll see these, you know, deferred tax assets and liabilities, but this is predominantly coming on account of difference in depreciation in the accounting policy versus what the income tax department looks at, it, right? So that's what deferred tax liabilities are. Then you look at current liabilities. Now, current liabilities are short-term liabilities due to be settled in a particular year. Once again, you see lease, which is on account of those right of use assets that we had, right? Then you have trade payables. I bought something from my suppliers. I'm yet to pay it to them, yet to pay money to them. Here, as per regulations, now you have to report how much have you taken from MSMEs and how much have you taken from entities other than MSMEs. And those two numbers are reported separately. So those are your trade payables. This is a liability because I have taken goods, but I have not paid money to them, right? Then there could be other financial liabilities that you see. Other financial liabilities is the exact opposite of other financial assets, essentially. So if I have taken a rental deposit from someone, right, then that is another financial liability. There could be other current liabilities like customer advances, right? So if a customer has paid me an advance, right, it's a liability for me because I'm yet to provide the goods or services against it. So other current liabilities could be customer advances that I have received. Provisions, there's a line item called provisions. What does provision mean? So remember a company in its financial statements in the, in the uh, income statement will report certain expenses. Like let's say it says I have, uh, I have uh, announced a bonus for all my employees on 31st of March, but this amount is yet to be paid, correct? So on the expense number, you will see salaries go up because this bonus is announced, correct? But you've not actually paid it, right? Because you've put it on the expense, your profit goes down. Because profit goes down, your reserves and surplus go down. So your reserves and surplus go down to that amount because you've increased the salary expense, but you've not paid it. On the asset side, you've not seen a cash outflow. So on the liability side, you put a provision for that till the time it is paid. So it's a short term provision that you've created for paying any kind of, uh, you know, items that you've accounted as a cost, but not yet paid. Salary is an example. Bonuses are an example. Gratuity is a long term provision. Usually that will come up. Leave encashment that the company has accounted for in the salary, but not yet paid because people have not claimed that yet. All of that could come under these provisions. And then finally, you have current tax liabilities that you see here, which is just an opposite of any kind of you know, uh, advances of taxes that you've paid, maybe there's a tax payment that is due, that is the current tax liability. So that in a nutshell is all the four sort of major components of this. We looked at what long-term assets are, we looked at what long-term liabilities are and equity is, we looked at what short-term assets and short-term liabilities are. These are how you will decode each of these line items on a particular balance sheet. Pick up another company's balance sheet, try and look at these numbers, try and go into these details and understand what they are. One more thing you can do is if you open the annual report of a company and look at the balance sheet there, you will see these notes here, right? What these notes are, notes to accounts, they tell you exactly what these elements are. So if you go into each of these elements of notes to accounts, you will find what this is. If you go to the notes to accounts for financial assets, other financial assets, you will find what exactly are other financial assets. So pick up the annual report of a company, look at its balance sheet, go and look at these notes to accounts and you will get more information about the business. That's it in this particular video. If you have any feedback for us, please leave that in the comment section. Thanks a lot.